Charles Smola Pace, Chief Information Officer at MTN, is my guest today. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to finally have you with us. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're most welcome. Thank you. So today, you occupy a very pivotal position. You're in MTN, which we would say is probably the clear market leader in the telco space. Yes, it is. What role has IT played in helping you to occupy this position? Okay. The, um, the whole telco business, I mean, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's centered around technology. Right. Um, you know, technology in broad terms, you know, both from a network uh, mm. down to the IT systems. Uh, but that's really the, the, whole, the whole existence of our business. Um, right. We today run what I would say probably the biggest or the top five biggest charging system globally. Um, and, and that's driven from our technology side as well. Uh, we run very big uh, customer management platforms. Okay, by charging you mean billing? Billing, billing and charging, right. yes. Okay. Um, you know, so we run, uh, like I said, customer management platforms. Yeah. Um, we run what we call the service delivery platforms that enable us to deliver all the value-added services to our customers. Okay. Um, we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have a very strong and robust technology um, and, and basically very good platforms. We wouldn't be able okay. to do it. Uh, you look at spaces like machine to machine, for instance, that's technology again playing a role. Um, distribution of music um, today in Nigeria, um, we play a big role in that. Again, there's technology playing a role. So it's really quite very much at the, at the, at the core of our business. Uh, mm. And I think it will be much more so um, as we evolve into being a very strong digital player in right. this nation and, and, and in the continent. Okay, yeah. so core to your platform. And yes. you're talking about top five systems. Mm. I would assume significant spend. Well, quite, quite a bit for a company of our size. Can you quantify that spend vis-a-vis -vis the return <laughs> on the investment? Well, without necessarily giving, giving the numbers away, I, I think uh, we, we're talking at about uh, 2.5 to, you know, between maybe 2.1, 2.5% of our total um, as, as a percent of revenue in terms of our okay. CAPEX. Uh, okay. the, same, the same will probably apply to, to our OPEX line. So. It's, um, it's quite a significant amount, uh, but I think if you think about running a 55 million subscriber base, yeah. the value and the amount of money you need to spend on our systems, you know, that affects the issue of licensing, for instance, capacity of your systems, um, upgrade, you know, and all of those. And so to be able to sustain that, um, it takes quite a whole lot of, um, of, of spending. spending. And I think mm. as a company, we have really done, we've done a lot of investment, um, okay. you know, both at the network level, uh, which we've been very open about, and also, you know, from an IT-based systems. Okay, but what's the impact on the customer? Look, a lot of people, uh, you know, we understand the challenges about our network, um, you know, that, that there, are, there are issues. It's not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily perfect, but we, we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we achieved if we didn't spend what we spent. We've made significant mm. investment in, in, in this nation today. Um, on network level, but particularly on a specifically on a system perspective, like I mentioned earlier on, we believe that our customers today are enjoying a lot of uh, value-added services, um, right. like I spoke about distribution of music, mm -hmm. uh, our ring back tone platforms, um, our charging, uh, real-time charging, uh, and our billing platforms, our customer management platforms, our, our IVR platforms, okay. um, all that whole ecosystems of platforms um, have helped us to, to make it easy for a customer to be able to interact with us. You know, our idea is to make sure that customer experience uh, is, is perfect for our customers, for them to engage with us and each and every touch point of our business. Mm. So any point a customer has an opportunity to interact with the MTN, our idea is that that needs to be a very pleasant experience. Um, and you can't do that with, without very good uh, technology platforms. Right. Um, so we believe that I think that um, that has actually given a very positive spin uh, to the experience of our customers. Uh, like I said before, had we not done this lot of investment and quite very modern technologies, uh, for instance, if you look at analytics uh, today, yeah. I believe we run one of the most progressive uh, and very robust analytics platforms today. Uh, okay. you, know, I, you know, I can even argue, say, potentially even within the MTN group stable. Uh, that gives you very strong capabilities to do business, uh, mm. for, to profile our customers, to be able to make sure that we can give them bespoke products and services. Without that investment and without those systems, I think the customer experience won't be what it is today. And certainly there's room for improvement. Uh, we're making the investment in the right areas. Um, and, and I certainly believe that going forward, it, it can only get better, it can only improve. Okay. 
So you're talking about the, you, you mentioned the quality of service. Yes. And yourselves as well as probably all your telco players have their customers complaining. You know, what specific measures are you taking to improve the quality of service? Okay. I mean, first of all, let's also understand that, um, let me talk first about VMT Nigeria. I mean, we carry okay. 55 million subscribers on our network um, right. going into 50, 50 57. Mm. You know, uh, if I have to make a comparison, sometimes I always like to use South Africa as an example because okay. that's even bigger than the population of South Africa. Yeah. True. That's sitting on, <laughs> on, on MTN network. So you have a bigger country than it, South it, Africa. We're hearing, we're hearing the country on the network. <laughs> so so that, that's quite significant. I think yes. if, you, if you start to apply the level of context, yes. uh, you understand the challenges. Um, mm. You know, there are certain improvements uh, that we're seeing today you know, in, 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 in Nigeria today. But we still have those elements of, of infrastructure powering of our, of our sites. Um, and those things continue to hit very hard in terms of customer experience. Um, Having said that, I think a lot of investment that we've made in the past, I think slowly we're beginning to, 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 to see the, the, the benefits of that. Uh, we're certainly going to continue to increase our headroom and also, also put our capacity in the right areas. Okay. So working very hard in terms of making sure that in areas where we have congestion, we continue to put relevant investment in those areas. Um, you know, and of course, look at other areas where we can actually improve the level of support uh, to make sure that we can be able to attend you know, the main time to repair. Mm -hmm. that we can continue to attend to some of the challenges that we have. Um, our view as a business, I think, is that we believe we're making very strong progress um, in addressing the issue of quality of service. Okay, so you recognize a problem, you're taking concrete steps yes. to address it. Yes. Let's talk about you, you know, your role at MTN. Yes. What would you say have been the most exciting moments? What are the most challenging parts of your job? Okay, um, I mean, the, the Chief Information Officer role, um, it's one of those, uh, I, I always say, uh, yeah, thankless. <laughs> <laughs> you get so, your reward when you get to heaven. <laughs> because, because you see, you deal with internal stakeholders. Um, right. I think by far for me remains the most exciting uh, uh, position within, with, within, with, within the business. I think you have an opportunity to deal with different types, uh, different units. Remember, because you provide service to all elements of the business. You yes. provide service to marketing in terms of the value propositions, launching of products, you provide services to sales and distribution to help them penetrate the channels. Uh, then you deal with enterprise solutions to ensure that they can go into the, into the enterprise segment. Uh, then you go into HR, finance. It gives an opportunity to be able to understand the whole end-to-end -end value chain yeah, of the business. Right. And that is very priceless. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, I think it remains a very, very exciting role for me. Uh, but of course, it's a very challenging role. It um, keeps, keeps you awake. You look at um, 55 million subscribers on the network. They generate so much data. Ability for your systems to cope with all these transaction volumes on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if something goes wrong on the network, potentially you know you do one little thing wrong, mm. you you can affect you know 10 to 15 to 20 million customers at once. Um, so it's a very critical function. Um, you know it remains exciting, but it's something that definitely does keep one awake. It <laughs> keeps you on your toes, right? It does very much, very much. <laughs> Excellent. So for those out there, what advice do you have for them? There might be people who are looking to be in your role, you know, in the future, maybe five years aspiring to be in a role like yours. What kind of steps should they, they be taking today? Okay. So that three years, five years, they're there. First of all, you, you have to do it because you like it. You have to do it because you have the passion for you're, it. You're passionate about it. Um, well, nothing, nothing else can make you do the job uh, more. <laughs> do this thankless job. <laughs> nothing else. I, I think it's important that you, you enjoy the role. Um, okay. First, the passion uh, for technology. Um, you know, you have the, have the ability to be able to work under pressure. Mm. Um, you know, again, it's a 24 by 7, um, seven oh. days a week function, you know, mm. all throughout the year. Uh, but it's, it's an exciting role. So for me, uh, anybody watching who's interested in going to technology, I think, particularly if you look at what's going to happen now, going into the future, because yeah. everything really goes digital nowadays. I mean, okay. there's a very strong migration into, into digital, uh, into convergence. That makes technology, you know, the anchor of everything the society will be based on. You know, right. we're also now talking about somebody who was saying software is eating the world. Mm. That you're moving into an era where the whole thing will be driven purely by software. Yes. Um, so for anyone who's got the interest of going to technology, I think it's a brilliant move. I think it's a brilliant career. 
um, you know, it presents so many aspects of the business, you know, either be it what we call data scientists, because people are saying now that in the future, data scientists will be the, the, the opportunities of the future. Mm. Uh, digital, uh, internet of things also bring, it comes into the angle of it. So it's quite an exciting role. Um, get a good degree, get yourself a, a grounded, know the basics, um, start very low um, and start to build from there. Um, and, and you can choose many other aspects of the role. You can choose either you want to go into, into a management stream or choose to go into a specialist stream. And I think either, either one of those, um, if you truly enjoy it and have the passion for it, um, you know, success and all of that will come. Definitely mm -hmm. will come. Wise words. So, work hard, keep focused, keep at it, be passionate about it. I think those are the words of advice Absolutely. that Charles leaves with us today. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Charles. It's been great having you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.